Evos Fox here. Welcome back to my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course sponsored by Streamlabs. I've shown you how to set up your overlays, your alerts, your widgets, how to even do a charity live stream. Today, I'm going to show you some secret features you may not know exists inside Streamlabs desktop, one of which I kind of snuck into a past, uh, a past episode that we're going to take a look at. So this is kind of getting the most out of Streamlabs Ultra. But if we take a look at the page, which many of you may not have visited the dedicated page on its own, it reveals some secrets hidden within Streamlabs Desktop. So obviously, with Streamlabs Ultra, you get bonus features in Streamlabs Desktop, just like we've talked about before. So extra overlays for free, lots of cool included bundles, and a few extra features. You also get extra features in Streamlabs Mobile, such as disconnect protection, uh, multi-streaming, and things like that. You can stream with Streamlabs Mobile for free, but you get some of the real goodies with Ultra. You get access to the web, web suite. I think I've made a video on this way back. This was before I had my kids. So like 2019, where you could set up your own, basically your own website through Streamlabs. So you could have your own dedicated online presence. It integrates your stream and your tips, and then you could build merch and all sorts of stuff. Pretty neat stuff. I, I've been a huge advocate of getting your own website, your own dedicated platform up on the internet to carve out your own corner that isn't owned by Twitch or YouTube or the big mega corpse. This is an option available to you for that. But then if we scroll down, you can stream directly from the Xbox with Streamlabs. You can actually tell it to stream to Streamlabs console, and that will add alerts and overlays and stuff and forward that to Twitch, which is rad. But also there's, there's video editors and a podcast editor and a clip editor. Wait a minute. These are not made super obvious here. But you do, get, you, you do get to use these. Now, again, it should be noted that these things are available for free to use. They're just more limited. So, for example, with the video editor, you only get 15 gigabytes of storage space for free versus 250 with the video editor pro. Only 30 minute export length cap versus an hour. Uh, max uh, export quality limitations, things like that. With the podcast editor, you're limited to one hour per month and only one hour per podcast, whereas you can upload 40 hours per month with Pro and export up to two hours long, as well as getting subtitles. And all of these will remove watermarks if you do the Pro version, things like that. And similarly, with the cross clip, you get higher output quality. You get to remove the outro and the watermarks. You get additional layers and things like that. So you can use these without Ultra, but oh boy, are they a much better experience if you do have Ultra. So let's take a look at some of these. Now I noticed before you can come over here to your recordings and you can actually choose to edit them. So you can upload them straight to YouTube from your recording section here in your sidebar in Streamlabs desktop, which is rad. You can also click edit. You have three different options. Standard video editor. When you just want to edit a normal, probably horizontal video to go up to YouTube or wherever. Cross clip, which can turn your clips from your stream into mobile friendly TikToks, Reels, things like that. And then podcast editor. This is an AI based thing where you can edit the text of your podcast to edit it instead of having to do traditional video editing. We're going to start with the normal video editor. We're going to click it. It's going to take a moment to upload your clip. We got to log in with Streamlabs here. Once you get logged in here, it will upload your clip and you are taken to this project dashboard. By default, it has a demo project with some demo assets available uh, just to kind of play around with the editor, but it is uploading our clip we recorded in the last tutorial course episode. We will take a look at that in a moment. One thing I really like is this is set up for team work. So if you are a streamer streaming to Twitch or YouTube or whatever, and you are working with a remote editor who will take your streams and edit them into highlights or dedicated videos or whatever, you can do that, share, upload things, share them with people, and then you can comment back and forth with each other for suggestions of things to fix, time codes of where things need to be messed with, and things like that. This is really powerful stuff that we've seen in the video production industry for a little while now start to take off, and it's just available right here for your stream. So here we have our clip. We can click the three dots to rename it, to grant permissions, to invite other people to edit it, to download it as is, or to publish it to YouTube. But we're just going to go ahead and double click to start now editing. Recording. Ah! Very loud. But you can see here, this is just the video itself. So here's where we can get comments. We can get people's feedback, whatever. But we, we, we want to play around with it. So we're going to come over here on the top left and go to video editing. We're going to edit our demo video. Here again, it has the, the the clips that it included on its own. We can actually delete these. It's just backspace. And I want to bring in under media that clip we just recorded. Slide it onto our little timeline here. 
And we've got a pretty bog standard timeline. We've got zoom in and out controls. That tells you how what the length is on here. We can use the handles to trim the ends, or we can use the scissors to split at a certain point and then trim from there. We have all the traditional stuff available here. We can drag it to a new track. We got transitions. We've got text we can add, filters, comments. You can start recording new stuff, including your camera, your screen, or audio to add to the video, which is amazing. A full-fledged web-based video editor here from Streamlabs Desktop, just ready to go to take you from recording stuff in Streamlabs Desktop to a video editor. Then we can export it and have it automatically published to YouTube when we are done. And it's built for team editing, so you can... There's even a green screen? Are you kidding me? You have no excuse not to make videos at this point. You don't even need to learn a video editor. I'm sorry, I'm really hyped for this. I get super excited when tools become more accessible. And this is it. You don't even need to learn Resolve. I love DaVinci Resolve, but like, this is here. Everything you record in Streamlabs, you can just bump up to the editor and start editing and make your YouTube videos. Make your TikToks, make your whatever. Speaking of which, we're going to close this. We're actually going to look at that clip... Cross Clip Pro. So on the default website, you can actually just feed it a Kicker Twitch VOD and it will automatically let you start creating clips for it. Or again, in Streamlabs desktop here, if we choose edit, we can choose cross clip and it's going to take us to that feature. Again, upload the clip to it and let us create a vertically oriented short real TikTok. So here we can upload a dedicated video file or we can pull in a clip from our Twitch profile. Uh, sure. I'll just pull in one of my clips. Been a little too busy to stream lately, but I do have some old clips available Ladies on my channel. My Shut up. Of course, we got all of my classic Apex clips that I reuse over and over and everything. We will use this one from the original Modern Warfare 2019 launch. Throw that in there. Get clip. It will download it. And here it's going to give you two boxes. One is to identify the center of your primary content, aka your gameplay, which it detects automatically. The second one is for your camera and you want to move it around and isolate your camera feed. Now mine's going to be a little awkward because I had a square camera and it wants horizontal. Then you can kind of edit the canvas to look however you want. You got views for input and output. You can go full screen. You can trim the clip down here. You have your layers right here. So you got two layers by default. So here's where we can change the camera to square content we want it to be portrait actually locked aspect ratio all right so now with camera we have a square camera and i can come over here to the input fill that in a little bit better here come over here to settings you have your output format you can make horizontal clips if you want obviously portrait is the way to go for tiktok or youtube shorts you can do square for instagram or facebook Blurred background behind your stuff. You can actually turn that off and just leave it black. I kind of like it. You can add a watermark if you want for your username or what have you. You can add an outro that shows that you edit it with this or whatever. Very simple. Very straightforward. Then you compile it into a clip. It's going to take two, th two to three minutes and then it will let you download it. It will also allow you to install the app on your mobile device. So you can post it from there, which is pretty cool. Otherwise, right now, we're just going to wait on the clip. Now we have our clip. We can download it to our computer. We can export it to post on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, because you can actually just share this URL with people publicly so that they can just watch it. The quality is actually pretty nice. You can edit it back in the editor. You can add it to a montage to build a better, like a bigger highlights reel, which is insane. Uh, montage test. You need more clips because you need up to six to make a montage, but that's freaking crazy. We've been asking for new services for that for a very long time. Then, of course, you can turn things into a podcast. I don't know what most of these videos are. We'll just go with this one again. Podcast editor, same dealio. All right, this is the podcast editor. This thing is crazy. It's processing the video clip that it uploaded. I can add subtitles. I can choose the subtitle style, which I love that one. That one's kind of more cinematic. I'd love that one with a backdrop behind it. 
can't really seem to do that. You can translate it to other languages because, again, this is AI powered. So it's going to do the auto transcription and everything like that through AI features, which is arguably the best use for AI. And then you can also have it automatically edit it for you with AI, which we're not going to do that right now. You can add logos, text overlay. You can create clips from it and then text based editing. That is the coolest part. As it builds your transcript here, you're going to be able to just delete words and it will delete that part of the video. These are one of some of my favorite editing tools that just make things so accessible. Instead of looking for the right spot in the waveform and splicing the clip and then deleting that and putting it back, like just delete the words that you say. This doesn't work for more creative stuff, but when you're just editing a stream VOD and you're like, yeah, I want to delete the five times I shouted out someone gifting subs in this clip where I'm talking about a serious subject, you can just delete them. Yeah, here we go. We are now recording in Streamlabs Desktop. We're using blah, 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 blah. So uh, maybe we just delete. And only 236 megs of RAM, just as a joke. Oh, whoa. It's still transcribing. Never mind. There's still so much more text. All right. I went ahead and swapped to Chrome. There was a banner saying it works better in Chrome and things loaded basically instant over here. We're now recording in Streamlabs desktop. Obviously, my microphone settings were not correct for the tutorial here, but that's fine. So I can just delete that or I can add stuff, turn it into subtitles, whatever, but I'm just going to delete it. And now it's going to skip over it. That is a substantial. It just skips over it. Like if I go back here to RAM. RAM. That is a sub. It just skips over it. Super easy. Just thoughtless editing. You don't have to worry about the mechanics, the technical prowess of splicing clips. They've got templates for layouts, all that stuff that we already looked at. Translation quick actions allows you to remove filler words or pauses, which is awesome. Make it nice and tight for shorts and things like that. You can switch between landscape, portrait, and square. And then once again, you can export video, audio only if you are doing a podcast, which is wonderful. Subtitles only in an SRT file, which is great for podcast networks or YouTube or what have you. Or just the whole text. If you just want a transcript for your website, this is powerful stuff. And all of that is on top of the incredible marketplace of high quality alerts and overlays and stuff you have at your fingertips with the subscription. Subscriptions are for everyone. Not everyone needs all this stuff, but if you want all the extra elements, the ability to host your own website, this theme is sick. This reminds me of Jinx from League of Legends. I love spray paint neon stuff. We're going to install this one too. You just get it included. Pretty neat stuff. This is how to get the most out of Streamlabs with Streamlabs Ultra. Check the playlist link in the description for how to build your overlays and everything else to do in this software. That glitch is amazing. What? Yeah, I got to use this for something. Remember to be kind. Rewind.